Good afternoon and welcome back YouTube. And God bless all of you who have found this video. I hope the Lord is blessing you and your loved ones and keeping you all healthy and happy. Thank you for allowing me into your home or wherever it is you are that you're listening. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. By faith, he lived as an alien in a land of promise. This faith that is a gift, it is not of ourselves. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham, and he said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Indeed, I will greatly bless you and will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. He obeyed to the point of offering up his son Isaac. Did you notice what he said there? What the Lord said? Because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Abraham had two sons. Ishmael was his firstborn, born of the bondwoman, the slave, to his wife Sarah. Your only son. This is where the seed is called. Now by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. His only begotten son. You see where he's only recognizing one, not the other. It was he to whom it was said, In Isaac your descendants shall be called. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. This faith, which is a gift from God, it is not of ourselves. This faith that causes us to obey which is this righteousness. Abraham obeyed God's command. He believed and obeyed. The promise was to Abraham or to his descendants, the seed, that he would be heir of the world. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that these would not be destroyed, or the world would not be destroyed, but given to the heir, or heirs. As he says in another verse, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and I will give your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, statutes, and laws. Now by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him and he cannot sin 
because he is born of God. Not the will of man or the will of blood or the will of flesh, but by the will of God. It is for this reason, it is by faith, that it might be in accordance with grace, in order that the promise may be certain to all the descendants, the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, a father of many nations I have made you, in the sight of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. This grace, this promise that was given to the seed 450 years before the law existed. So, of course, the law cannot nullify the promise. But that promise and that grace is only pertaining to the seed. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. That seeking has to come with all your heart, all your mind and all your soul and strength, your entire being. Putting everything that you are into it. Salvation is of the Jews, Jesus said. And Paul writes, we are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Through confession of our Lord's testimony, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have also been found sinners, is Christ then a minister of sin? May it never be. So, Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith. Again, this faith, which is a gift, it is not of ourselves, it is given to us. This faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed. Being granted to believe. And in that belief, what did he say? Comes suffering that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For if I build what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. Through the law, I died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. What did he say? Those who suffer will reign with him. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith again, which is not of himself. He lives in this faith in the Son of God, who is the Spirit given to him, who loved me and delivered himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Righteousness comes through the Spirit of Christ. Without it, it simply cannot be achieved. This faith in the Son of God comes from the Son of God. Those that don't have the Spirit do not belong to Him. This is what this channel is about, teaching people to understand where they belong, where their place is. These men are the born again, the seed, 
the spiritually circumcised, made into holy priests, kingdom priests. Abraham had two sons. The promises was only given to the one. Not that the other one would perish and go to hell forever, but that other one serves. The older serves the younger. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. As he says here, now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, referring to many, as in plural, but rather to one, and to your seed, that is, Christ. This is who the promises were given to. The rest are not going to receive these promises. It is not as though the word of God has failed. For they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel, neither are they all children, because they are Abraham's descendants. But through Isaac, your descendants will be named or called. That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are regarded as descendants. The seed this is why I get so upset when I see people arguing over skin color and their race or their language, how it's being spoken in many tongues and in many nations, I will place your seed. He is in all of the peoples, not just a certain race. There is a tribe that is chosen. That is the seed. That's what I'm going to show you here. For he says, I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. That I have great sorrow and unceasing grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ. For the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites. To whom belongs the adoption as sons and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the temple service and the promises. These are the fathers and to whom Christ came according to the flesh, who is overall God blessed him forever. These are who Christ came for, who belong to the father, the tribe of Levi. That is who the promises were given to. These are his eternal ministers forever, Aaron and his sons. Why did Christ come for them? Because they are angry and violent. They needed the spirit of the son to save them. He had promised them from the beginning that they would be his ministers they stand before him in the Holy of Holies. They give the testimony. They carry the Ark of the Testimony. No one else could do that but them. They're not a nation anymore in Israel's eyes. But yet they are God's personal possessions. His royal priesthood. Let me read that one out loud. Curse be their anger, he said. For it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will disperse them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. These are your 12,000 that are scattered throughout the 12 tribes. Since therefore, brethren, we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Those who enter the holy of holies. By a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. The Father has made this Jesus, our Lord, King, 
high priest and apostle. He is the head of God's church. These are those whom belong to the Father that he gave to the Son. They're different from the rest. Their judgment is different from the rest. Their resurrection is different from the rest. I've showed these things here. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil, from an evil conscience, excuse me, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and to good deeds, not forsaking our own assembly together as it is a habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. For as many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. And as it says, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. My calling did not come after I repented. I repented after I was called. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God preformed through him. He did this in your midst. Just as you yourselves know, this man delivered up by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. That means knowing and doing ahead of time. You nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. Because the Lord God said this would happen before he was born. It was his destiny or his fate. He could have not changed that one bit. He was made for this purpose. God raised him up again. See, this is where the American people fall short. They say Jesus rose from the dead, but they never give that glory to the God who raised him up. Putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. This man, who God delivered up by his predetermined plan and foreknowledge. Just as it's written, Moses said, The Lord God shall raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. To him you shall give heed in everything he says to you. Listen to every word he says. And it shall be that every soul that does not listen to that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Listen to every word he says. If you think what he says contradicts with another prophet in the scriptures... Who do you trust more? Do you trust the words that come out of Jesus Christ's mouth? Or do you trust the words that come out of the other prophet? Now, I'm not saying that the other prophet is contradicting him. It is your understanding or lack of understanding that makes it seem like it's contradicting itself. Because the scriptures are written this way. To keep those out that do not belong in. Now, some of you might say, well, this is the book of Acts. If you want to know where this was said before it was written here, it was said in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 through 19. You will be utterly destroyed if you do not listen to that prophet. Likewise, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and his successors onward also announced these days, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the families. Because we are scattered in them all, and I'm looking for you all. For you first God raised up his servant, and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. He sent him, into our hearts 
turning us away from evil, from sin, from all of our wicked ways. These are those who are born again. This is the seed. These are the chosen. What did our Lord say? Many are called, but few are chosen. Because you are called does not mean you are the chosen. But what I'm showing you here is the chosen one. They or you are called through them. God performs his will through them. They were born again by the will of God, not their own will. It was not anything they asked for. There was no prayer for it. It was a faith that was given to them as a gift and they serve God. According to his foreknowledge, God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. Through the Spirit, it causes us to obey. I'm going to leave this video alone for right now. It's long enough. I will pick up part two tomorrow. Everyone's getting home and it's getting noisy. Lawnmowers are starting. But I pray you're all having a wonderful day. I hope you watched the whole video before you commented. And there will be more tomorrow. I can give you an idea that tomorrow's video should be as long as this one, if not longer. I've only reached halfway through the verses that I have. But anyway, I hope you have a good evening and God bless you all.